Hi everyone, welcome to Evie's Toy House and today we are making a new My Little Pony custom. So some of you may know there is a new My Little Pony movie coming out. It is called My Little Pony the Movie. And this one looks like it's going to be a lot of fun to watch because it is set in the ocean or in the sea. So there are going to be new ponies and they are actually sea ponies. <laughs> so these are like mermaids but instead they're ponies with tails. So today I'm going to be using Rainbow Dash here to make a sea pony, Princess Sky Star. She is Queen Noah's daughter and is a very beautiful sea pony. Alright, let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do with Rainbow Dash here is to remove her hair. So we're going to trim off her bangs and also her tail. I'm just going to snip it right off. There we go. And we're also going to take off the bottom portion of her hind feet. So sorry, <laughs> sorry Rainbow Dash, we're going to have to take your feet and we're going to glue them together so that there is some base for the clay to hold on to to build her tail. To make her fins, we're going to use a flat piece of air dry clay and using a cutout of Princess Sky Star's fins, we're going to trace it with an X-Acto knife and cut it out. Okay, so we're going to remove it and clean it up a little bit. Now using my dotting tool, I'm going to carve some lines into it. I'm going to follow the printout. Now for the tail, I'm going to use a large lump of air dry clay and I'm just going to keep shaping it into a tail shape. So this is going to take some time to just shape it so that it looks like a tail. And so it's a good thing that we kept the feet because this will help the air dry clay stick to the body. Okay, now we have a shape that I like. It looks like a mermaid's tail. We're going to attach her fins to it. So the fin is very thin. It's not going to be able to stand on its own. What I'm going to do is make it fold down on the bottom here so that when it hardens, it can be part of the stand. Here we go. We're going to pop it up so that it dries. For her mane, we're going to do the same thing. I have a cutout here and using a thicker piece of air dry clay, we're going to trace it out with an X-Acto knife. So now we're going to clean it up and smooth down the edges. Then on the base part, I'm going to broaden it out. So I have this little ball here. I'm just going to flatten it out a little bit, but I still want that round shape so that we can put it on top of the leftover mane. So here is Sky Star. We're just going to put it up here and blend it in and attach it to her head. So Sky Star has these two uh, knobs that kind of look like horns, but they're not. They're kind of rounded off. So here it is in air dry clay. I'm going to attach it to her forehead. Now to make her necklace, I'm using two long strands of air dry clay. I'm going to wrap it around her neck. Since it's very tight in the back, I'm just going to wrap it halfway around. And I'm going to add her pearl. Alright everyone, so take a look at my Sky Star. Doesn't she look pretty? So, she has this tail here that's kind of wavy. But it also works as a support, so that when I put her down, it's actually not going to break off. And so here's her uh, mermaid body, <laughs> her mane, which is also kind of moving in the water, and a um, little part, front part of her, um, her mane there. I'm going to be using a pearlizing medium, so I'm going to add it to a light yellow color, and this will give the paint a pearl effect. So we're starting with yellow all over the body. And then we're going to paint the face too and around her eyes. For her tail, I'm also going to be using a pearl blue color. And I'm going to paint her mane also. This is going to take a few coats for it to look good. Right now it's just the first coat so it looks very thin. 
and after three or four coats, it'll look really good. For her feet, I already painted over her hooves with the yellow, so I'm going to paint a layer of white over it first. So then when I come in with the blue, it'll be more visible. Right, now we're doing the final touches. So we're going to paint her hairpiece a pearl pink color and also her necklace. And I'm going to add one layer of pearl pink on her wings. It's going to be a little bit translucent, you won't be able to see it very much, but it is there. So in the pictures, Princess Sky Star has these marks on the side of her body. I'm going to use a very light yellow and um, this round tool here to make those marks. And I'm going to do it on both sides of her body. And finally, using a pearl white color, I'm going to draw some lines just to enhance her tail and also her mane and hooves. Now we're ready for the eyes. I'm going to start with white first. And we're going to make it a little bit pointy on the bottom. Then we're going to outline the eyes with black. And give her some eyelashes. For our irises, I'm going to use a bright blue. And for her pupils, I'm going to use a dark blue. Then we're going to add white dots. Alright everyone, so here is my completed Princess Sky Star, my first sea pony. What do you guys think? <laughs> I really, really like her. I think she looks adorable with that tail. Oh my gosh. So here, let me show you a close-up. So she has blue eyes with uh, dark blue pupils and she is wearing a pink necklace with a pearl on it. Her body is yellow, but it's kind of a pearl yellow with some um, kind of white uh, dots on it and her hooves, her tail and her mane are a blue pearl color so a pearl blue color so because her tail is kind of thin it is bent down here to give it a little bit more support so that when she is uh, sitting this piece is also um, on the floor or on the table and help support and hold it up but it is kind of uh, shape so that it looks like it is in the water and moving a little bit. It has a little bit of that, that curved motion. And up here is her mane. Her mane is also shaped a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. So it's a little bit wavy. It's a little bit thicker than the tail. And also she has these two things. I'm not really sure what they're called. I don't know if they're horns or um, just kind of part of her mane. And then she has a little headpiece or hairpiece. Alright everyone, so let me know down below in the comment section what you think of my Princess Sky Star. And of course, if you guys like this video, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Hi everyone and welcome to Evie's Toy House here. So today we are going to be making a sea pony. I have Pinkie Pie here from the Guardians of Harmony and I am going to turn her into a sea pony from the new movie, My Little Pony the Movie, that's coming out later this year. So the reason why I am using this Pinkie Pie is because their joints are movable. So what's really neat about their head is that they go all the way down. So for a mermaid, it's kind of nice being able to be more upright so that we can build in the tail. And the other thing about it too is that these tails just pop off. <laughs> Alright, so I can't wait to see what she looks like. Let's get started. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is remove the tail. Pops off just like that. And we are also going to remove the legs. And I think this should be pretty easy to pop off. Let's give it a try. If not, we'll have to cut it. But it doesn't seem like it wants to just come out. Um, we will have to take an exacto knife and cut it out. So um, if you're going to be doing this at home, make sure to be very careful and also uh, get your parents' help because um, it could hurt yourself. Cutting this, okay, just like that, it comes off.
This rubber is actually kind of soft, so it's not too hard to cut. You just don't want your finger down here because if you slip, you could cut yourself. So make sure to cut away from yourself and don't have your fingers underneath the knife. All right, so here we go. We have Pinkie Pie. Oh my gosh, we are so ready for that tail. Let's get some air dry clay. Okay, so starting with a piece of air dry clay, you can start shaping it into the shape of a tail. You want this to be about the same width as Pinkie Pie's body. this in here. Start to blend it in a little bit. At this point we have Pinkie Pie that's posable. We're going to pick a pose for her. This maybe. Just her hair. Because once the air dry clay is dry, we won't be able to move her body anymore. We will we'll be able to move the joints, we won't be able to move her tail once the air dry clay is dried. Alright, so this is the shape that I ended up with. So we're going to smooth it down so you get this really cool mermaid shape. And now we need the end of her tail, the fins. And roll this out. And we're going to cut out a shape. Alright, now we just had to wait for the tail to dry. Alright, so we have Pinkie Pie and her tail is dried. So take a look at this. I sanded it down a little bit so that it's much smoother. And she looks really cool. And here is the tail part of her, um, actually her fin. So what we're going to do is glue this on so that she'll look like this. Okay, so now it's dry and it's looking really, really cool. Take a look at this. So I really like it that you can still move Pinkie Pie's head and also her legs in the front. And we have this really cool tail. So what we're going to do now is actually give the uh, clay a layer of paint. So we are going to be using this um, pink blush pearl. So this is a pearlized pink color which I think will be very very pretty. So we're going to paint this on the tail. So I think this is going to take a few coats to make it nice and pink. And just for this tail portion, I'm actually going to use a little bit of hot pink to change up the color. So to make the scales, we're going to be using this liquid clay. So this is a Sculpey Translucent Liquid Bakeable Clay. So I learned about this technique from the Craft Hacker. She has a really cool channel and I really like the way she did her scales. And what we're going to do is I have my piece of um, Teflon paper here. So it's a non-stick paper. And we're going to make a very thin layer of this clay. So it needs to be super, super thin. But before we spread it out, I'm going to add some paint to it. And we want to make sure this is actually very, very thin. Almost paper thin. Okay, once we have it spread as thin as possible, we're going to bake it. Alright, so we are done baking and so here is the sheet. It's actually pretty cool and look, it's flexible. And so we're just going to peel this. There we go. And taking our hole puncher, we're just going to punch out a whole bunch of these scales. 
So as you can see, these are very thin. And so this is what we want. And we're going to punch out a whole bunch of them. Alright, so now we're ready to put the scales on. So we're going to start from the bottom up. And what I'm going to do is put on a thin layer of Mod Podge as glue. And this will dry translucent, so it's okay if I get it on the other parts of the tail. So I'm going to do just a little bit of time so that it doesn't dry out. And we're going to start with the small circles that I got. So I cut out two different sizes. So one is a small circle. And I'm just going to shape it onto here. Okay, so I've laid down a few of these small ones. Now we're going to move on to the larger circles. And it's still a bit hard in the beginning because this tail section is very small. But as the glue dries, I'm going to fold it down so that it is flush with the clay. So this is actually really hard to do with the camera on, so I'm going to do this off camera. But what I'm essentially going to do is layer these circles on top of each other and to give it that layered look. And it's going to take a lot of little circles. Alright, so right now I am about halfway through and I just want to show you my progress. So this is actually very slow, tedious work. You have to lay down a layer of glue and then carefully lay down each of these circles on top of each other and let it kind of uh, wrap around the clay. But I'm really happy with the result. Take a look at this. It looks so cool. So here is a side without any scales and here's a side with the scales. Doesn't that look neat? <laughs> I'm just going to show you how I'm doing this. I'm using glue and then layering it on top. And we're going to do it one row at a time. Wait for it to dry, press it down, and then we'll work on the next row. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of the tail and um, I'll be back. Alright, so the tail is done and take a look, isn't that pretty? <laughs> so right now I have a layer of Mod Podge on it so that's why it looks a little bit uh, opaque-ish. And what we're going to do is um, add some glitter because I think sea ponies always need a little bit of glitter. <laughs> So what I have here is some white and pink glitter and I'm just going to sprinkle it on. I really like these scales. They are so pretty. Alright everyone, so we are done. Take a look at Pinkie Pie as a sea pony. Isn't she beautiful? I just love how this tail turned out. So the scale is kind of iridescent because of the glitter. And also because the pink that I used had a gradient color, so it gave it kind of that shimmering look. And of course up here, her body, her front part of her body is still poseable, so we can still move her front legs, we can still move her neck, so she can look like she is swimming, kind of like this. <laughs> or she could also be sitting, and we can move her head back, so she has a more upright look. That is so, so cute. And of course, we also have our Princess Sky Star. This is the first sea pony that I made. And this was using um, a regular uh, pony that didn't have the movable head. So she um, is a little bit more restricted in how she can be posed. So she looks a little bit different, a little bit shorter. I think just as cute and of course we didn't have the scales back then so I think having the scales really make a huge difference in giving it that sea pony look and um, I like both of them actually so let me know down below in the comment section what you think of my sea ponies and what you think of these scales and if you guys like this video make sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys next time bye Hi everyone, welcome to Evie's Toy House and today we are going to be making a new custom. We're going to make an Applejack sea pony. So as you might know, there's a new movie coming out later this year and it features sea ponies. And I think it would be really cute to see what Applejack looks like as a sea pony. So I have Applejack here and this is from the Guardians of Harmony set. 
And what I really like about this set is that these ponies here don't have the brushable hair so they have the molded hair and also their necks are um, adjustable all the way up so as a sea pony she might actually want her head more vertical and these toys actually allow them to do that. So this way we can have a sea pony that's more upright and have her tail back here. Alright, so let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is take off her tail. So we're going to pop this off. And we also need to remove her legs. So we're going to use an X-Acto knife. So if you're doing this at home, please get your parents to help you. It's uh, an X-Acto knife. Is, an X-Acto knife is very sharp and you don't want to um, hurt yourself. So over here, we're going to cut the legs. You gotta be very careful. Make sure your fingers are not underneath the legs because you don't want it to go all the way through and accidentally cut your fingers. So go real slow and it just pops off. And do the same with the other leg. Well, your fingers are not in the way. And cut carefully. And this plastic is actually pretty soft. So you don't have to cut too deep. All right, so the legs are off, and now we're going to use air dry clay to build her tail. All right, so I have a piece of air dry clay here, and we're going to shape it into a tube. That's more tapered towards the end, and we're going to stick this side into Applejack. Going to set her legs so that we get the pose that we want and we start to shape the tail into the shape that we want it to be okay so for Applejack this is the shape that I'm going to have her tail so we're just going to have to wait for it to dry now with an exacto knife we're going to cut out her tail fin So we're going to have it dry kind of like this. Alright everyone, so the apple jacket is done and I sanded her down a little bit just so that she's a little bit smoother. There's still some imperfections here but that's okay because we're going to cover it up with the scales. And we also have the tail. So this tail looks a lot like um, Apple Jack's ponytail. <laughs> And we're going to have to glue it on here. So this is the way I had it so that it kind of rests on it, on the floor, like that. So we use some glue. And then we're going to glue it on and wait for it to dry. So Applejack's tail is glued on. I think it looks really, really cute like this. And now we're going to paint it. So we're going to paint the tail with a layer of the light orange mixed with a pearlizing medium so this will make it look kind of pearly all right now we're ready to make the scales for the tail so what I'm going to use is this Sculpey Translucent Liquid Bakeable Clay. So this is a liquid clay that when you bake, it's translucent and it's also flexible. So what we're going to do is, on my Teflon sheet here, this is a non-stick bakeable sheet. A rectangular piece of this liquid clay. And we're going to need to smooth it out so that it's paper thin. But before we do that, I'm going to add some color. I'm going to add some orange and add some pearlizing white. And we're going to mix. And we need to make this very, very thin. Here it is. So it's kind of an orange gradient. And now we have to go and bake it. This is done. It's nice and baked. And we can peel it off the sheet. As you can see, this is very thin and flexible. It's 
Isn't that cool? Now we're going to take a hole punch and punch little round circles with it. So as you can see here, this uh, little circle is actually very, very thin. Applejack is dried and she looks really good. So I really like the way her tail is posed. That's a very different kind of look. And as you can see, there are some imperfections in the clay here, but that's going to be okay because we're going to put some scales on it. So right now I have my, uh, this is a little bit of Mod Podge. So this is the glue that we're going to use. And uh, we're using it uh, because it dries transparent. And over here I have um, all my little circles cut out. They're in different gradients of orange and yellow. And so we're going to start layering it on to Applejack's tail. So down here I have a few small circles. I had a smaller um, hole puncher that I made little circles with and we're going to use that on this part of the tail, just that very narrow section. And then the rest of it is going to be the larger circles. Okay, so let's start by putting a layer of Mod Podge. And it's a little bit hard in the beginning because um, the glue is still very damp. But once it becomes stickier, it'll be easier to fold the clay down so that it's uh, shaped to the shape of the tail. So I'm going to wait for that. We're just going to keep piling on these circles and then we'll press it down later. Alright, next we're going to add the larger circles. So this is going to be a very slow process. What we want to do is add the scales uh, one row at a time. So you kind of stack them over each other so they're overlaying each other about halfway. And then once that row is mostly dried, you can start on the second row. It's also a little bit harder to work on the end of the tail since that part is a lot more narrow and we need to fold the circle a little bit more. But once we get to the larger part of the tail, it'll be a little bit easier. So at this point, we are about halfway done. And as you can see, it's starting to look really, really good. So we have the darker orange, some yellow, and the lighter oranges all mixed in for that scale effect. And there are a few pieces that's going to be um, open like this where there's not enough glue. And that's easily fixed by just adding some more glue and then pressing it back down. So to finalize the tail, this is what I'm going to be doing, adding some glue to these little flaps that are open and press them down. So I'm going to continue working and finish the rest of the tail. Alright everyone, so my third sea pony is complete and I think Applejack looks fantastic. Take a look at her. Her tail is really, really cool. I just love this effect. The scales look really nice, especially with that bit of glitter on top that I added afterwards. Makes it really shimmery and kind of glimmers. And what's really great about using uh, these ponies is that the front is still poseable. So, the front legs are um, still posable and the head is posable. So what's really nice is that she can be actually more upright like this. So it looks like she is swimming or her head can be tilted back when she is at rest. So that um, the way I made her so that her tail actually rests on the bottom like this and both her legs up in the front can be up. <laughs> this is super, super cool. So you want to play with her, you can have her more upright and just have her be swimming. Okay. 
then of course we have our other two ponies. We do have Pinkie Pie that I made last time. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. And she is a lot of fun too. And I really like the way her head also can move and adjust her pose. Um, Princess Sky Star is different. She was more of a, um, a, a different pony and so her body doesn't or her, rather her neck doesn't move and she's not as uh, posable and also she doesn't have the scales so when I first made her I really liked her but now that I see these other two ponies with the scales I almost want to go back and add the scales so let me know down below in the comment section what you think of these sea ponies and if you want to see me make the rest of the main six if you guys don't like it um, I, I won't make any more just because these are so so tedious to make with each of these tiny little scales so give this video a big thumbs up if you like it, and I'll go ahead and make the other main six. As always, make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Hi everyone, welcome to Evie's Toy House. Today we're going to be making a new My Little Pony custom. We're going to be making another custom from the new My Little Pony, the movie that's coming out later this year. So the pony I'm going to be making is called Tempest Shadow. She is going to be voiced by Emily Blunt and I just can't wait to see her because she is such a beautiful looking pony. So I think she is going to be a very cool character because take a look at her. She is wearing armor and she has a broken horn and also a scar over her eye. So I am so so interested in finding out her story. So to make this custom, we're going to be using Twilight Sparkle. So this is the Twilight Sparkle from the Guardians of Harmony set. And she looks really really fierce because she is fighting some changelings. So I think this is going to be a great fit for Tempest Shadow. Alright, let's get started. We're going to start first by taking off Twilight Sparkle's armor. And then we're going to remove her wings. We won't be needing her wings since Tempest Shadow doesn't have any. Next, we're going to take off her hair. So Tempest Shadow's hair is a lot different from Twilight Sparkle, so we're going to have to remove both the bangs and the mane. So after filling the gap in her head with air dry clay, I'm going to take a flat piece here and we're going to trim it into the shape of her mane. So I'm going to put some arches in here. And then we're going to mold it onto the back of her head. That's looking really good. Next, we're going to take smaller pieces of air dry clay and start to build her armor. Tempest Shadow wears armor on her body. And instead of just painting it on, I think building it out of air dry clay will make it look so much better. I'm going to put a broader piece across her back. I'm going to blend it all together so that it looks like it's one piece. And we can't forget the piece on her back here under her tail. And once again, we're going to blend it in. So we're going to add additional pieces of armor to her and this is going to cover the vital parts so her back and her joints so her shoulders and also her hips and these are just hexagon shapes we're going to blend it in a little bit but we don't want to blend it too much because we want to see these pads Next, with an X-Acto knife, I'm going to cut off her horn. Tempest Shadow has a broken horn. We don't know why yet, but hopefully they'll tell us in the movie. And finally, we're ready to paint. So I'm going to give her a coat of dark purple paint on her legs. And we're also going to paint her horn and her face here. We're going to paint around the eyes. So now we're outlining her eyes. Her skin tone is looking very dark because the purple that I was using was too bright so I mixed in a dark blue to it. So now her skin tone is darker. And we're going to fill in the eyes with white. And 
and cut her pupils blue. So I see that on the picture it looks kind of aqua but on the doll it's actually blue. So I'm going to go with blue because I think she looks really good with that color. And using a very dark shade of blue, paint her pupils. Now we're going to add some white circles. Using a light purple, we're going to draw her scar. So she has a little bit over the top of her eye and a little bit down on the bottom. And we're going to fill her teeth in with white. And she's starting to look really fierce. Look at this. Next, we're going to paint her armor. So we're going to paint it a dark gray color. And this is a gray mixed in with a little bit of silver. On her armor plates, we're going to paint it a different color. This is a dark gray mixed with some blue. So it's a bluish gray color. Of course, we can't forget her shoes, so we're going to paint these shoes a dark blue color too. And next, we're going to paint her mane a dark red color. So this is a beautiful red color. I really, really like it. It's like a crimson red. And of course, we're going to paint her tail red too. Alright, finally, we're going to paint her cutie mark on. So it's light blue, and I'm not really sure what it is. But hopefully, we'll find out in the movie. Alright everyone, so my template shadow is done. What do you guys think? So I'm really happy with the Twilight Sparkle figure that we used for this custom because she looks so fierce. Since I've not seen the movie yet, I actually don't know what she does in the movie, but because she is wearing armor and she has this broken horn and a scar of her eye, I think she is a very fierce fighter. So here is an up close look of her. She has a dark purple skin tone with blue eyes and dark red mane and tail. So that is a very beautiful red color. And of course she has this broken horn up here. Hopefully we'll find out why uh, in the movie. And she also has this scar over her right eye. She is wearing armor and instead of just painting the armor on, I did use air dry clay to actually build uh, the armor on top and I think that actually made a difference because you can see the armor um, come out and there's like two different sections of it. There's the base layer which is in dark gray and then there's the upper extra armor, kind of the um, arm pads, shoulder pads, um, leg pads uh, for her body that is in a dark blue shade. And here is her cutie mark. I'm not really sure what it is, but it looks really cool. And down here, she is wearing shoes. So her shoes are the same color as her armor. So doesn't she look so fierce? Oh my gosh, I really, really love this figure. And I really love the character too. So let me know down below in the comment section what you think of my Tempest Shadow. And if you guys like this video, make sure to subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!